Okay. All right. So let's actually just talk about the idea of Revit, right? And I'm going to make a lot of, of comparisons um, between AutoCAD and Revit. So those of you that, that do know AutoCAD, that's great. But for those of you that haven't had it, it's not a big deal, right? You'll be just fine. Um, but the idea, let me just do a little graphic here, right? The idea behind AutoCAD is that, um, oh, look, I put up my PK poster so you guys don't forget all the talk talk. Um, the idea behind AutoCAD, right, is that you have all of these individual files, right? <coughs> so this is the floor plan, here's the second level floor plan, here's the section, um, here it, what, are, what else do we have? Elevations, um, details, can't forget details, um, reflective ceiling plan, you know, we might have a hundred of these, not a hundred, but maybe like 20, 25, right? And we have all of these <coughs> separate files, right? And so we draw the floor plan, and then when we're done drawing the floor plan, we close it out, and we save it, and we're done with it, right? And when we want to draw the section, we open up the section, we extract the floor plan in, and we use it as a template to draw the section, right? Now, it's a pretty good system, although when something changes, like we make a change in the floor plan, well, because these two things are separate files, I have to open up you know, once I'm finished with the floor plan, I have to open up the section and then make all the changes to the section that the floor plan then floor plan then represents, right? So the idea behind AutoCAD is that we have these separate files that they, you know, they function independently and you have to use them all together to create the entire project. Um, the way that it usually works, sometimes, some, you know, you get working professionally and sometimes you do this, sometimes you don't, um, but what usually happens is you create these all separately and then when you're done, you kind of, with a system of XREF, XREF them all into one file that you then print from, right? It's called a sheet. So we have our base files that are all separate, um, but even though they're separate, you have to use them together, right, to generate other files, okay? And then when we're done, we take all of those, we XREF them into a sheet file, and then we print, right? So what's really nice about this system is that if somebody, like, you know, the new intern, um, goes in and they mess up the floor plan, it doesn't affect all the <coughs> other 30 files, right? So you could say, oh, I, you messed up the floor plan. Well, let's change the floor plan back. Okay, well, it's done, right? And the XREF system automatically updates it in the, the sheets and nothing else is affected, right? Um, so this is generally how AutoCAD is set up, right? Now, the way that Revit is set up is quite different, right? So, well, let me, let me clarify one more thing about AutoCAD. In general, AutoCAD is a 2D drafting program, right? And it does have 3D capability. We can model in 3D. Um, but in general, it's used for 2D drafting capability, okay? And when we do that, right, we go into AutoCAD. Let me just, for those of you that don't know, I want to show you a visual of this first. Okay, so we open up AutoCAD. Let me get our YouTube going here while we're waiting. There we go. All right, so when we're in AutoCAD, right, this is what it looks like. I want to draw a wall, right? And when I draw a wall, I draw a line, and I can use several tools. But if I were just to make it very simple, right, that representation right there is a wall. That's what a wall means. It means one outer line to represent the width of the entire wall and a thickness here that's maybe 5 eighths of an inch to represent gypsum board, right? So these four lines represent a wall system, okay? Now, this wall system, if I look at this from the side, it's completely flat, right? So I see these little lines from the side and it's completely flat. I look at them from the top and there's my representation, right? And my showing you that just shows you that um, there's no 3D, you know, things in here. They're not 3D in nature. They're flat, zero-width 2D lines, right? And the meaning of a wall is that our brain knows that these four lines mean a wall, okay? Um, with that, there's no other information connected to those lines. So we can guess and say, well, if I measure that and it says 5 eighths, we can kind of determine that that means gypsum board, right? Because gypsum board's 5 eighths. Um, so, you know, there's maybe some guesswork if it's not necessarily defined. Okay. Now, Revit, on the other hand, Revit is a BIM software, 
It's a building information modeling software, okay? And the difference between something like AutoCAD, where it's a 2D drafting program, and Revit, which is building information modeling, is that um, when I'm working in Revit, let's just, I'm gonna open Revit and just show you a quick difference. I'm just gonna open this sample project here. Okay, here is a floor plan. Okay, and it's all drawn out very nicely. And if I look at the walls, right, I still have kind of these, this layering of, of lines, right, um, that have different widths that mean different things. But the difference between this wall and the wall in AutoCAD is that, number one, this is a 3D element. So I'm looking at this in a plan view and I'm seeing a plan view of this wall. But when I flip into a 3D view, right, this wall is 3D, which means it has a height to it. And it's, it has a bottom constraint definition and it has a top constraint definition, right? So this wall, it let's look at a section of this. Okay, we'll just pretend, right? But this wall, okay, it's in metric. But we'll fix that real quick. Maybe. Maybe I need the inches. Okay. Right? And that wall was on the second level. And that wall isn't just two dumb lines that doesn't know where it starts and stops. That's a 3D element in space, right? In our Revit workspace. That is nine, or let's see, nine, well, I guess it starts here, eight foot, ten and a half inches above level one, right? So it starts there. And it stops at the roof line, which is 19 foot eight. Okay, so it's a 3D element. It has a point of beginning, a point of end. And in addition to that, when I look at it and I look at the wall assembly, it is defined by what it's made of. Okay, so this building model has information attached to it, right? So um, when I say it's a building model, it's a model, it's a 3D model. Building information model, the building elements have information attached to them, so they're very well defined, okay? And that's useful because, um, especially for contractors, right, who have to bid jobs and cost estimate, you know, I can look at this wall, and if I'm trying to figure out how much drywall to put on this wall, well, hey, look, the area of that wall is, well, it's in meters, right? But it's 43.2 meters squared. If that were in feet and inches, that would mean something to me, right? And I could add all those up and figure out how much drywall we need for this project or how much floor area we have for finishes, right? Um, so there's a lot of useful information in this model that can be extracted out in schedules and used for other things, okay? So that is the building information, information modeling portion of Revit. And it's one huge plus to the building or to the, to the software, right? The other really nice thing about Revit, and I love this and I hate it sometimes because I've been using AutoCAD for so long that I'm so sick of the things that are wrong with AutoCAD that the things that are wrong with Revit don't faze me <laughs> because it does the other things right. Um, but the way that Revit works is that for, for those of you that maybe have opened a file, there is one file that we use in Revit, and that is the modeling file, right? It's all self-contained. There's one file that we use, which is magic. Um, so we don't have 30 different files that we have to coordinate, right? This one changes. Oh, that means that one, that one, that one, and that one, and that one have to change. But they don't function together. So I have to open up, close, open up, change, close, open up, change, close, open up, close, right? You guys get the idea, um, which is good and bad, okay? So what's nice about this, about the Revit system is that um, it's one model and everything is contained in that model, right? So we build this 3D model, right? And the, for example, floor plan, floor plan, floor plan two, elevation, section, detail. These are all views of the model. So the way that we generate a floor plan is we look at a floor plan view of the model. We're viewing it in a certain way to see these certain drawings. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, what a floor plan view means, right? Let's look at the actual model, right? 
because I have a 3D model here, let me show you graphically what it means. Ooh, my section read. Oh, let's see. Hold on one second. These tiny icons. It's my only peeve, pet peeve about Revit. The itsy bitsy icons everywhere. All right, so when I want to look at a floor plan view, right, I have a floor plan view over here. And when I double click on it, I see a floor plan view. But essentially what that means is that Revit, by, um, by using view ranges, which we'll talk about later, right, today is just kind of an overview of the system, right? So I just want you to kind of look and learn and see what the, the system looks like and how it functions. Um, but I don't expect you to actually draw today, okay? But the way that a floor plan view would look like is if, if I were to kind of look at this model, you know, at a three foot cut above the floor plan, right? So if I were to take that project, cut it, cut the top off, cut it horizontally at three feet and look down, that is the view that I would see to generate the floor plan, right? When I'm looking at an elevation, I'm looking at an elevation. Let me turn off my section region. <clears throat> so when I want to look at the front, oop, ooh. When I want to look at the front elevation, right, Revit allows me to look at the model this way. When I want to look at a different elevation, Revit flips it around and says, hey, well, there's your other elevation, right? We've got a bunch of trees here, but here is a third elevation. Okay, so the difference between AutoCAD and Revit, the biggest difference other than the information portion of this is that the building elements actually represent 3D building, building elements, right? They're defined with information. We have one singular file that we work from, and when we want to create a view or uh, like a, a working drawing, right, we look at or we view the model in a certain way. So when I want a, an elevation view, <coughs> I view the elevation of the model, right? When I want a section view, I view a section view of the model. Um, and they're all, they're all um, really very relatively easy, easy to generate, okay? Okay. Another important thing to know about Revit, and this is also um, opposite of AutoCAD mostly, is that we have parametric relationships within our model, right? And parametric means that when I do one thing and it affects another thing, there's a relationship between those two items and that one pushes, one pulls, right? You, you push on this side and it pulls the other side in, okay? So relationships are formed between objects in Revit. They have a parametric relationship with one another. So that means that, for example, if I am, let me go into a floor plan here. Let's take a look at this front wall. Oop, I need to select it a little bit different. Hold on. Okay. Let's just grab this wall. There we go. Hmm. I'm on the wrong level. That's why. Level two. Okay, so when I grab this wall, for example, right, in floor plan view, that same wall is highlighted. You see it's blue because they're the same element. I'm viewing the model in a 3D view over here. I'm viewing the model in a floor plan view over here, right? So if I pick this element, oops. It's a little jumpy today. If I pick this element over here, click, it highlights the element in the floor plan view because they're the same thing, okay? Now what the idea of a parametric relationship is, um, is that when I take this wall and I, for example, move it in, you know, let's do three feet. There will be a lot of errors, right? But it's, I know, there you go, right? <laughs> um, but essentially what happens is that anything that is somewhat attached to that wall moves with it, right? So I push that wall in and all of, for example, these interior walls moved with it, right? There's a relationship between the two. So I move one thing and it moves another thing, okay? And every view that those objects occur in, it's changed. So you notice that when I change it in the 3D view, 
that it's also changed in the floor plan view, right? So this whole system of AutoCAD where I change the floor plan, you know, and the elevation stays unchanged, that system is done with Revit, right? I change one thing and it changes another. So it's, it's you know, constantly updating and moving, right? Which Paul's like, yeah, that's great, right? Until the brand new intern goes in and deletes the floor, right? <laughs> um, so it's great because changes are made globally, right? Um, but it can be really dangerous because changes are made globally, right? Um, you, but, but the good thing about it is that very literally, if you have several people working on a job, when something bad happens, all of a sudden people start standing up. And they're like, who changed the floor? <laughs> you know, and, they're, and everybody's like, what, what, what's wrong with the floor? You know, and then, then the errors start happening. So it's like kind of an immediate thing that people, and you start figuring out what happened, right? Um, so you can't really hide. There is an undo button. There is an undo button. No. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it's like AutoCAD. I mean, we do have an undo button, but um, the mere fact that it just starts affecting everything immediately. Right, so you can undo it, but you have big ramifications very quickly if you're not careful. All right. So this system, we have one file. That file contains um, all of the different views um, of that model, right, that you're going to be working with. And all of those views, what's really nice about this is that they're all organized in what's called a project browser over here on the left-hand side. Okay, um, you'll notice that we have a couple of different sections in this project browser. We have views, see that up at the top here, right? And I can close that. And then down here at the bottom, we have sheets. This is really, again, very magical when you've been using AutoCAD for a long time, right? All of the sheets are in one file, <laughs> right? Um, so I have these views. I have the views that are placed on sheets, and then the sheets live in the same file as the views in one model, right? It's really, it's really a very nice system, okay? But that is the main difference between um, AutoCAD and Revit and the idea of um, the AutoCAD, which is a 2D drafting program, and Revit, which is a building information modeling system, okay? Um, what's really nice about this, um, and something that's really, you know, has improved my workflow when I do professional projects is that Revit has a ton of integrity, right? Obviously. Um, does anybody in here use SketchUp? Yeah? Okay. So Revit goes flawlessly into SketchUp, right? So if you're working on a project with someone and you don't want to show them your Revit model because it's kind of computer-ish, right, just on the screen. This looks very computery, right? You want to use SketchUp to make it look more hand-drawn, more loose. You can export this as an SKP and bring it, or a DWG and bring it right into SketchUp. It's amazing. So the workflow between those two is really very seamless, which is really nice. Um, it's really nice, especially when you're in school, right? And you want to put up presentation drawings of your design, but you want to have some nice drawings with integrity to, you know, for your floor plans and elevations and things. It makes, um, it gives you a lot less work to do, I guess, <laughs> which is really nice. Okay. Any questions so far? All right. So, let's see. I have yes. Can we export individual uh, drawings as floor plan or something like that to other formats? Yep. And it comes out as auto plan line? Yep. Yep. So, that happens all the time, right? Everybody, I mean, I don't think AutoCAD's going away. I just really don't. I think a lot of people still really use it, right? We go to a lot of firms. Did we talk about this last time? We go to a lot of firms, and a lot of people are using it still, right? Um, but a lot of people are using Revit, too. And so I can take this Revit file. I can go right up here to, whoops, oop, export to a DWG. I want my current view, right? I go to my desktop and I hit OK. So you're working with someone and they don't use Revit and they say, can you, you know, we really don't use Revit. Um, is there any way you can give me a CAD file? You export it out, right? There it is right there. It's taking longer for AutoCAD to open than it did to export the file. 
right? And there it is. Right? Can I ask my question, um, like with the language and stuff, since it's not like hand recorded, like it is in the NFL. Right. Is that just like somebody who was taught in the beginning, or is there like, because like here we have our own standards for right. language for reading to the kids' voice, but does right. that translate? So Revit has kind of their out-of-the-box pen weights, right? Um, those of you that haven't used AutoCAD, AutoCAD is a color-based um, line weight system, right? So different colors mean different thicknesses of lines, okay? Revit does not have that. Um, Revit, if I look at my Revit file like this, okay? If I zoom in really close, you see the line weights are built in. So when I print, they look like this. I, there's a visual setting where you can turn them off and just work, but essentially you're not really going, like when I want to draw something in AutoCAD, I go to my layer, I set my layer, I draw a wall. When I want to draw a window, I set my layer and I go and I draw a window, right? You're not doing that here. They're, they're built in, essentially. Now, you can go in, there's a, um, a line weight chart and you can change them, but honestly, at there was one firm that we changed them when we were converting over to, um, to Revit. Everybody was still really used to AutoCAD, and so when we got Revit, they were like, we have to change our pen weights to exactly what the, the AutoCAD ones were. And I really think it was just a waste of an exercise because the line weights in here are pretty, they're, they're pretty good actually. Yeah, so we just leave them alone. Nor, yep. Okay. <laughs> Um, are really, um, so like, for example, I saved this file into AutoCAD, right? And you're asking, can you save this down to an earlier version of AutoCAD? Well, so what you do is you would, you would do save as, well, this is what you do. Right, I would choo I would change my save down here to like 2007. Uh, no. So you're the only one doing it. I oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Sorry, I see what you're saying now. So what you're saying is um, that here, when it exported it, it exported. That is a good question. Oh no, I can change it here. I can go down to 27, 2007. Yeah. Before it exported, I can change, you see that, to 2007. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So what Nora's asking is, well, this exports to automatically to AutoCAD 2018, and if I only have 2007, I can't open that newer file. But you can save it down immediately before. Yeah. Uh, is there a margin space uh, layout in Revit? No. No? Nope. Only we ha only have model space. Oh, wow. Isn't it nice? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> well, let me let me. Ref we have we have model space. We have our sheets down here, but they're not like they're not a paper space type, like interface where it's kind of um, it's different. It's a little different. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so those two files now you created the DWG. Mm -hmm. are those linked? linked? No. Can you link them? Nope. 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 It, it would be nice, but the idea is that you really don't have to because you should either be working in AutoCAD or Revit, right? Not going back and forth between the two because that just kind of defeats the purpose. Yep. Yep. When you export this one to AutoCAD, do you, you have like the same layer in AutoCAD? Yes. Like the line? Uh -huh. Do you change like the, those lines or no? Um, if you, so these lines come in and they are not, they're not specified according to your pen weights. So I don't think you would have to change the layers because look, they come in on a dash wall, right? It knows what layer it needs to be on, but you might have to change the color for it to print correctly in AutoCAD. Yep. But let me reiterate, you shouldn't really have to do this. <laughs> the whole point of Revit is to use Revit, right? It is beyond infuriating when you're working with someone that doesn't know Revit and they're like, can you just export it to CAD so I can work on it? And you're like, you're causing me twice the amount of work, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I get it, but the idea is that you work in one or the other. So is there a reverse of this? Do you uh, transfer your AutoCAD drawings into Revit, but then the, the whole thing only works with that drawing? Yes. Right? You can't. So that's a better workflow, right? If you were like, hey, I want to use AutoCAD because it's just very quick, right? right. Um, 
the drafting is very quick, the lines are dumb, right? So there's not information attached to them. So you can draw floor plans and different things very quickly and then link them into your Revit file and then continue on with kind of construction drawings. Okay. Yeah, that's a good workflow. Yep. Okay. So let's talk about, today I want to talk about the interface. I want to talk about a little bit about terminology. Um, I want to talk about saving a project, and I think that will get us through tonight. Um, you're not going to have homework for a couple weeks, likely, because there's a lot to learn before you can actually function in, in, in Revit, right? We have to, I know, right? Well, and we don't have class next Monday, because it's, it's, I know. There's no class Monday, it's um, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Um, yeah, so we, we basically have a week off, right? If only it were warm outside. <coughs> that would make it wonderful. All right, so let's look at the interface, okay? Um, there is a lot to Revit, and if I were to say which program has more um, settings, it's the, you know between AutoCAD and Revit. Revit by far wins hands down, right? Um, there are so many settings and so many dialog boxes in Revit that you can get quite lost. Okay, um, but what's nice about it is that you, they all kind of are based off of the same type of action. Um, so once you kind of know how it works, even if you maybe get stuck or something or don't quite, you know, you get into an area where you know what you need to do but you don't know the process, the process is very much the same with most things, right? Um, okay, so I'm just going to stand, I'm going to stay in this standard file here and you guys can just watch me. Um, but the first thing I want to talk about is the quick access toolbar so and the the application menu and the file menu okay so this has changed a little bit up here in the corner right we um, used to have in Revit the big R like this the application menu like AutoCAD has right um, but now we just have a little R and when you click on it why don't you see what it does okay I think maybe they've gotten smart to the idea that it's kind of repetitive right I mean in AutoCAD the this right all of these and this all do the same thing. And they're within like a tiny little, you know, um, area right there. So we have our file kind of menu right here, but it's a tab that is, you know, slightly in front of our architecture tab. So our file menu has all of our, our sort of system type things in it, right? So open, new file, save, save as, export, publish, print, close. And then here we have an options. Um, uh, button as well okay yawns are contagious Sorry. you're gonna kill me Aaron. <laughs> i'm over here yawning <laughs> i should have made some coffee all right so um so we have our our file menu here okay so when i, when I want to create a new drawing right i go to file i can click on new project click and what pops up here is our new project template um, dialog box, okay? Revit has several predefined templates for you to use for whatever type of industry you're in, right? So we have construction, architecture, structural, and mechanical. Um, whatever one is appropriate for you, you can use. They contain different wall types. They contain different um, symbols in them, right? Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense today, so I won't get into it. Um, but just know that you can use these predefined Revit templates or you can browse for one that maybe you've created. Okay. In fact, you know, I'm going to just step back here for a second. Let me close these out. Okay. I'm going to go back to, um, this is the page or the screen that opens when you just open Revit, right? And we have over here on the left-hand side where it says projects. Um, if you hit new, we get that same new project dialog box, right? So brand new file, no geometry. I could click on architectural template, right? A new project, hit OK. And this will open up a blank Revit file, okay? Now, you notice that we have the projects area and we have the families area. Um, they're two different things. If I were to compare these two items in AutoCAD, Project would just be a drawing file, right? You open up, you draw, it's a project, okay? Um, families are going to be similar to what we call blocks in AutoCAD, right? But a family is a smart block and it's 3D, okay? So families are going to be things like, um, like um, furniture or appliances or um, 
uh, things of that nature that you would put into a project, right? Doors and windows and um, different elements like that. Those are, blocks. Those are our blocks. Yep, exactly. So we have new projects and we new have new families. Projects create brand new building models. Families allow you to generate these 3D blocks, okay? Um, let me just say though, much like AutoCAD, there's so many out there that you can download that very rarely do I have to create a new family, okay? Um, I think the most used, um, what you use this for mainly is for editing families that are already existing, okay? But this is for new projects and this is for like blocks, okay? Doors and windows and furniture, appliances, different elements that go into architectural projects, okay? If I wanted to open up a brand new drawing in Revit, I would just click on new, or I could come down here, hey, I want to, you know, click on the architectural template. Um, as you start working on projects, this is a recent projects um, area. So the project that you were, you know, most currently saved, right? You notice I was in the sample architecture project, right? Um, will be will be shown here. So once you get going and working, all of the projects you were working on will show up in that bar right there. So when I want to start a new drawing, um, let's, I'll just click on this sample one again because it has a lot of stuff in it, right? I can use it and I'll open that up. Okay, don't worry about this. I'm just going to do it for today. Okay. All right, so let's look at the interface. I'm just going to go into a 3D view so you can look at our nice, beautiful model here. Um, but we do have our file menu, which we just talked about. We have our R, which you know minimizes, maximizes, restores. We have our quick access toolbar here, okay? We have this in AutoCAD as well, but this contains some of the most used um, uh, processes or commands in Revit. So things like saving, opening, undo, we have print, dimension, keynote, text, 3D. Um, this, this right here, thin lines, remember when I was showing Shante the, right, the line weights? Thin lines allows you to either see or not see the pen weights. And there's reasons why you would turn this on and off. And we'll talk about that. Okay, so I'm gonna close that out. I also have close hidden windows, right? Close hidden windows um, allows you to close views that are behind other views on your screen, okay? And what that means is that as I'm navigating through Revit, so I'm over here on the left-hand side in the project browser, if I double click on a view right here, click, click, a window pops open. Click, click, a section pops open, right? Click, click, something else opens. Click, click, another view opens, right? And what ends up happening is that all of these views, they don't close. They all stack one on, on the next, okay? Um, that's nice because if I wanna go to the floor plan, or I want to go to this, this sectional view from my floor plan, I can close that view and this one shows up, right? I can close. The next one that I had open preview shows up, close, right? Until you get to the very last one, at which point it will close the program, okay? So what close um, hidden windows does is that if I have all of these windows behind my current window, I can click on that. When this is maximized, click. And it only leaves one view open. Okay. I don't know how many Revit will stack, you know, can you send me these so we can figure it out. Um, it'll stack quite a few, okay, um, but every now and again it's nice to just kind of close out those ones behind this one. Now what this next button does, oop, maybe, okay, the uh, switch windows, if I use the little drop down, it shows me what views are open, right? So this one may be um, actually being viewed, right? Um, but if I click on uh, switch windows, I can click on this next one and it will bring me to the next one. You're thinking, well, why not just go over here and click? Well, it's probably easier, right? I've got all these click, 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 click. That's a pretty nice view, right? Ooh, I want one of those in my house. Looks like it would burn a lot of little fingers though. <laughs> One time at least. Why not? One time. <laughs> hmm. I don't know, my little one might do it a few times. My Oh, it's all hung very high. 
touch it, you die, right? <laughs> okay, so um, we have switch hidden windows, right? And at a certain point when there's several open, it's nice to be able to go back and say, oh, well, I want the north end elevation click. Okay, well, there I am, right? Um, so we have our quick access menu, which, you know, allows you a few <coughs> limited things. You can customize this. There's a little drop down next to it. Click. Um, so you can turn these things on and off. It's just a toggle, right? And you can customize by clicking on customize quick access. And you can choose other ones that you want to add or subtract, right? Um, I've never really changed it, I guess, because I maybe I've just gotten used to the ones that are there. I don't know. Um, but I feel like... Um, I feel like all the tools are pretty easily accessible in Revit, right? Like AutoCAD, maybe they're, you have to search a little bit more, in, you, but this one's pretty accessible, and so they're pretty good, I think, how they are. All right, so we have our quick access toolbar. Um, we have our app, where our application menu used to be. Sorry, we don't, we don't have that anymore. Um, we have our ribbon, of course, just like AutoCAD, right? Just like a lot of other programs. This, um, this area where we have all of these icons, this is our ribbon, right? And our ribbon contains all of our drawing commands, um, all of our modification commands, all of our annotation commands in graphic format. Um, these are all organized on tabs. So here are tabs, okay? If I click on a tab, I switch to it. Click, 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 right? And on each of these tabs, I have these tool palettes, right? So I have build. I have circulation, I have model, I have room and area. And each of these contains um, a set of commands that are appropriate for that tool palette, right? So wall, door, window, right? This allows me to draw a wall, draw, create a, a door, create a window, add a component, okay? So um, most of these tool palettes are tuned towards one task, like building, obviously. I create building elements, right? Or if I come over here to annotate, well, here's all of my dimensions. So I'm going to annotate with dimensions, okay? Very similar to AutoCAD. Um, what's nice about Revit, and this is similar to, um, uh, oh, look at that. Sorry, that just totally caught my eye. They've got those nice, um, what are those awnings? Big windows. <laughs> nice big awning windows there that I never noticed. Um, we also, we have these um, icons, right, that we can click on to initiate commands, but we also have um, keyboard shortcuts, okay? Um, so I can, instead of coming up here and clicking on wall, I can type WA, and I can initiate the wall command using WA. So I can come up here, click, click, oh, well, it didn't work because it wasn't defined right. It goes from level one to level two. We want it to go up to roof open it's out of my crop region there we go there's my wall right um do you have the roll everybody on the roll oh okay make sure you get signed up on the roll i know right who held it up over here of course of course <laughs> okay so there are short keyboard shortcuts right um so w a w a on the keyboard click click there you go all right um, let me just take a little pause here. I want to show you guys something. Um, on the, let's see if I can remember, P, this PC, on the CAD Common, under Arch 2350, I think I showed you this the other day, resources, okay. Um, there are some things in here that you can use. Um, Revit keyboard shortcuts is one of those. So if I click click on that, you could print this out and here is a list of all the keyboard shortcuts. This is under Arch 2350 Revit resources. It's all specific. Yeah. I know, I know. That's why it's so fast. I know. You'll get to know them, don't worry. Well, here's the thing, though. Um, even though it doesn't do that, you can customize these very easily, right? Um, so we CAD dorks, right? Um, I like to make all my keyboard shortcuts in AutoCAD and Revit the same, which I've done. And it's really easy to do. <laughs> I know. Um, it kills my husband, right? 
Yep. Arch 2350 Revit Resources. Yep. Okay. If you want to um, add or subtract um, some of your keyboard shortcuts, you can go to, I think it's view, yeah, go to view. You can go to user interface, keyboard shortcuts. And just remember guys, I'm, I'm recording all these lectures, so if you forget something, it's gonna be on the video too, right? Um, but keyboard shortcuts, and you can come in here and you can add them. So for example, if I start typing in wall, It'll say, oh, well, wall, W-A. Well, if I wanted to add a new one like WW, a sign, I could add that in there as well, right? So now when I type WW, click, click, there's my wall, right? So you can add some of them in there so that they're all the same, you know, ideally as your AutoCAD model. <laughs> you guys will get there one day. You'll be like, that was so nice that she showed us how to do that. <laughs> I know. It's... I know, it's lazy. My husband's a button guy, right? So I've said this before, but like an AutoCAD Revit, he has to have every icon up. You know, his whole second screen is icons. I'm like, what are you doing? It's too much. What's that? <laughs> to what, put all your icons on the other screen? This one, no, 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 not as much. But you can take your, your um, you can take your, these, these uh, browsers and you can put them over there. Okay, so we can change our, our um, we, have, we have keyboard shortcuts and we can change them if we need to, right? Um, let's see. Now one thing that is very similar in AutoCAD and Revit is that, you know, it doesn't really matter how you do something, generally speaking. Like I can initiate the wall command using wall or I could type WA. You know, either, either direction is not right or wrong. It's just, you know, a different way of getting to the same point. So if you want to use the keyboard and type, or if you want to use the icon, doesn't really matter, um, you're getting to the same place, okay? All right, so skipping over to, let's see. Well, we're gonna talk about our options bar in a second. Let's go over to our palettes, our tool palettes, okay? Um, this is something you'll have to get used to if you've been, thank you, if you've been an AutoCAD user. Um, but Revit has these tool palettes that are used and we have the properties tool palette and we have the um, project browser okay the project browser organizes all of your views of the model and all of your sheets okay and a few other things that we don't really know about yet so the views right are on top and they are separated out by type so we have floor plans 3d views elevation sections right all very nicely organized. And then at the bottom, we have sheets, right? So sheets are going to be um, drawings that you print, right? And they have a title block on them. And here we have our views placed on the sheet, okay? So we have our views and we have our sheets, all right? And I think that's as kind of um, as much as I'm gonna get into that today. We have our properties dialog box over here, right? And the properties dialog box allows you to choose what kind of things you're going to draw. Meaning, if you know I'm drawing a wall, am I drawing a wall that is a CMU block wall with gypsum board on it, or am I drawing a brick wall, or am I drawing um, a wood stud wall, right? So when I go to click on wall, Revit will say, hey, what kind of wall do you wanna generate, right? Which is important because um, this modeling system is all about information as well. So you need to, you know, draw the proper item so the information is correct, right? So here I can choose, you know, a retaining wall, right? And I can draw my retaining wall, okay? Or I go to wall and I click on foundation wall. Great. There's my foundation wall, right? Um, you guys get the idea, okay? So I click on wall or any, anything else really. The properties dialog box allows me to choose what kind of item I'm doing, okay? The properties dialog box also allows me to define those items, okay? So I choose the type of item. It's a wall, but it's a brick wall, right? Well, that's great. It's a brick wall, but how tall is that brick wall? Where does it start? Where does it stop, 
right? How are we going to view it, okay? All of those things are also contained over here in our properties dialog box. So I click on wall and it says, hey, where is the base at? Where is the top at? Where, you know, what are some of these other things that we need to define about that object? Okay, so, um, and again, today is just informational. We're getting used to the interface, right? Um, so I'm defining the, the, the parts and pieces. Um, project browser, properties dialog box, very important, okay? You can take these and you can drag one on top of the other, right? And now they're tabbed. You see I can go tab back and forth. Pain in the neck, people. That's what that is, right? Just kidding. I can grab this one and I can drag about out, back out if I don't like it. Oop, it docked at the top of my screen. Pain in the neck. <laughs> Personal preference, I guess. I can also grab these and drag them onto my second screen, right? So you all want to get second screens so that you have a lot of real estate, I guess, right? Very nice. There we go. Um, but you can move these wherever you want them to go. Okay. Another thing that you're going to want to take notice of is when I, for example, try and draw a wall, um, I have my project browser. I have my properties dialog box, and then I have a modify toolbar here. The modify toolbar will allow me to do um, or to define different things within the object I'm creating, okay? And we'll leave it at that. Um, one interesting thing, or not interesting, but thing that is different about Revit than in AutoCAD, um, things like the modify toolbar, they don't just show up, right? So if I'm looking at this wall, I'm thinking, how do I... How do I redefine that? Where did that toolbar go? Or, you know, a lot of things in Revit are dependent upon a selection set or only appear when you're creating something, right? So, you know, this modification toolbar that I saw there, it shows up when I create a brand new wall, right? But once I finish that wall and it's done, even if I click on it, it doesn't show up again, right? I have to modify my properties through the properties dialog box. But even then, the properties for my wall don't show up until I click on it, right? So Revit is a lot about um, keeping track of your screen, looking for options when they pop up, and just knowing that a lot of times things don't show up unless you have an object selected, okay? Any questions so far? Okay. Yeah. I know, right? Yep. Yes, it did. <laughs> and it assigned a pen weight to it. <laughs> you define that. So that's input, and we'll talk about that another day. Does it matter what color the rooms are, or do you just pick that arbitrarily? Well, you're talking about this hatch. Yeah. This plan is kind of special. They have defined it that way. Normally, you don't. It's, it's blank. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Properties, um, tool palette, project browser. And then we have, of course, which seems pretty simplistic, right? Our drawing area, okay? We don't necessarily call it model space or paper space. We can if we want to, you know, old habits. This is model space, I guess. But this is our infinite drawing board, right? And it is. It's an infinite drawing board, okay? So you draw your projects here. Um, and just like AutoCAD, you draw them dimensionally correct, right? So if a project is, you know, 200 feet by 200 feet, we draw it 200 feet by 200 feet, okay? All right, let's see. We have our view control bar, right? This is like the worst toolbar ever, I swear, because it's so tiny. This little toolbar down here, all right? Um, this Con controls the view essentially. Now, one that's one really good thing and kind of really bad thing about Revit is that a lot of things are view specific. Okay, meaning if I change this floor plan here, but I have an exact copy of it called something else, it will only change um, this floor plan. Now, that doesn't um, pertain to building elements. You change a building element, it changes it everywhere, right? But if I, for example, delete this dimension or delete this grid or move this elevation marker or delete this room legend or change the scale or hide some things or you know um, 
show some things differently than the other floor plan. Um, we have a lot of things that are very view specific and it's good because I can use the same base model to illustrate the basic architecture of the space, right? But then I can control what um, I allow the user or the end person who's gonna be building it, right? To what they wanna see. Um, so it's nice because, you know, if there's somebody who's doing flooring, well, they just wanna see the flooring. They don't really care about the lighting maybe, right? Um, so that's nice, but on the other hand, you have to control your visibility per view, right? Which can be kind of a big job. Um, so there is a visibility settings down here. This, this right here is gonna change your whole, those of you that used AutoCAD before, this is gonna change your life. <laughs> okay, here's how we change the scale in Revit, right? Right, I know, right? Oh, you want it to be a quarter of an inch? Done. Right? Hell yeah. You should clap a little, right? <laughs> it's just a lot easier than AutoCAD, right? Um, AutoCAD does have annotated features that make this possible. It's just not this easy, right? Um, and prior to annotative AutoCAD, you know, you had to have four or five different dimension styles, right? You had to have a bunch of different text styles because every time you change the scale of a drawing, all of the annotation had to be changed with it, but not automatically changed with it, manually changed with it, right? And so this is just really great where, you know, I want to change the scale of a drawing. I just change the scale of a drawing and all of the annotation and everything changes with it, right? It's just that easy. Um, so it makes it not horrible when something like that has to happen, right? my favorite part right here. We'll just change scale all day long. <laughs> there we go, right? <laughs> okay. Um, we have a detail level, right? Let me show you what detail level does. And it's not, you know, it, it really is just, again, kind of a um, per drawing type setting, meaning some drawings don't need to show all of these different layers of the wall, right? And some do. And so this detail level, if it's set to coarse, it just makes the wall solid, right? So, um, so you only see the solid nature of the wall. Where if I change it to medium, I see more definition, right? This one will probably won't have a ton more, but fine, we'll allow another level of, of detail if there is another level of detail, okay? Um, we're not going to worry about these sun paths and shadows. We're just going to leave them off for now. Um, but I do have what's called a crop region. Wait, oh, let me turn it on. Hold on. Where's my crop region? Oh, there we go. Oh. There it is. Okay. So I have what's called a crop region, right? Um, this allows you to either crop the view or not crop the view. And what that means is there may be things on this view like the property line that needs to be there, but you don't want to see it on the floor plan, right? So this will allow you to define a region around the floor plan. Do you see that turning on and off? It's like a viewport, essentially. So it will allow you to define an area around that floor plan where you don't see really anything beyond it, okay? Uh huh. Yep. So if I click on it, I can drag it out, make it larger or smaller. Okay. So now when I choose to, and these are these are um, uh, crop um, settings. If I choose to crop the view, right, I don't see anything outside that crop region, right? If I choose to uncrop it, I see things outside of it. Okay. This will allow me to either see the crop region or hide it. Okay. Um, we have a temporary hide isolate. I'm not going to get into how all these work just yet. We will eventually. But this is something that will allow you to turn things on and off temporarily in your view, right? Like you're looking at this area and you think, hey, I really need to turn the stairs off for a second because I want to see something underneath them, right? Um, you can turn them on and off. And when you turn them on and off, if you want to turn them back on, this little um, reveal hidden items allows you to see the things that are turned off and turn them back on if you need to. Right, so in this view, for example, all the trees are turned off, meaning they're not visible, right? Just like AutoCAD, they're frozen. Um, these little um, turbines are turned off. This is a very sustainable building. They have little PV panels over there, right? 
Um, but all of those things are not visible on our plan, okay? So this is our visibility settings um, dialog, or uh, uh, I guess menu down here. And then, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave, you. yes, we'll leave it at that, okay. So this is our interface, right? Um, and again, today is just informational, right? You don't really know how to create anything. You don't know how to draw very well. We'll get to that, right? But there's a lot of explaining having to do with, to, having to do with the interface before we can actually interact with it, okay? Now, another thing, those of you that have used AutoCAD probably jumped right on and started using your mouse immediately the way you should, right? But those of you that don't know AutoCAD probably weren't able to. Um, but your mouse, right, helps you navigate and move around and draw things in Revit. And um, the way we're going to use our mouse, right, we can move it about. Um, I can, the middle roller button, if I um, roll the, the middle roller button away from me, I zoom in, right? If I roll it towards me, I zoom out, okay? Just like AutoCAD. I zoom in, I zoom out, okay? If I want to pan, which means to move about the screen, I hold the roller down and I move my mouse, okay? So I'm panning. Okay. I zoom in, I zoom out, I pan. Um, those uh, navigation items don't break commands, right? So if I'm drawing a wall, click, and I think, oh, I need to get in there closer to see what I'm doing. I can zoom, zoom, zoom. Okay, yeah, click. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Okay, yeah, click. Okay, zoom back out, pan about. Okay, yeah, click, right? So I can start a command, move about, zoom in and out, pan back and forth some more, and my command won't be broken, okay? Um, maybe my point with that is use your zooming options, use your navigation op options, don't be afraid to use them. Zoom way in there so you can see what's going on. Um, I also have a zoom extents option on my mouse. The middle roller, if I double click it twice, click, click, very fast, I zoom out to the extent of the drawing, right? If I'm zoomed very far in right here, okay, and I double click on the mouse very fast, click, click, the roller button, I zoom out, okay? I can also use a shortcut on the keyboard, right? Z-E, zoom extents, and I zoom out. Z-E, zoom extents. This can be all the way out in nowhere land. It can be totally missing and you're, you're I joke around, you guys, you guys know Thomas, right? <laughs> Scrolling around here like an idiot. That's what he said. <laughs> scrolling around here like an idiot. <laughs> so funny. Um, so if you're scrolling around here like an idiot um, and you can't find your drawing, right, and you're thinking, oh, great, it's missing, um, probably the first thing you're going to do is do a zoom extents, right? So you double click the middle button, click, click, and it brings it right back, even if it's very far gone, okay? All right. So any questions so far? Not yet. Okay. Again, today, very informational. I'm not expecting you to remember everything. We'll go over a lot of this as we move on, of course. Um, but let's talk about a little bit of terminology. Okay. Um, there are a lot of different things in Revit. I've got a lot of walls going on here. Do you see all these walls I created? They're slicing through this project at weird angles. Um, those designers, right? We'll delete some trees. <laughs> That's probably it, right? <laughs> okay. Here we go. Um, I flipped into 3D. Let me just give you this little note, right? So here's a, a 3D view, okay? If I come up here to my quick access and I click on 3D, I'm in 3D. If I want to go back to a 2D floor plan, I go over here to my project browser, click, click on the 2D floor plan, and there I am, right? So that's really how I'm going to start navigating about Revit, okay? If I want to switch windows, I can click, go to whatever window I want to go to. A shortcut, again, I'm a keyboard person, right? But if you want to take your mouse all the way up to that tiny icon and squint, right? When I'm drawing over here, it is all the way over there, right? <laughs> I'm just saying, right? 
You guys will get there one day. Trust me. <laughs> or all the way down there. It's mostly because I have to squint to see the tiny icons. Um, but if you want to bypass that inconvenience, we'll call it, you can control and tab, 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 tab. Okay? And that will start cycling through all the different views. So if I'm here and I'm thinking, oh, I need to go to the other view, tab, tab, tab. My mouse is in the same spot, right? Tab, tab, tab. So control, tab, tab, tab. Okay. Um, I can also close these windows out. Don't be afraid to do that, right? The windows that are on our drawing area, click, click. I'm click, you know, I'm closing out because I have them stacked one on another, right? There's a bunch that are kind of resting on one another. When I get to the very last one, right, it'll tell me before I close out, it'll say, hey, wait a minute, wait a second, you're on the last one. Do you want to save and close? And at that point, you can say no, right? All right, so we can navigate a little bit. We know how to open some of these views. Um, let's talk about some terminology, okay? This is a side note. These go into virtual reality so easy. Sorry, this is this view just reminded me of that. We should do some virtual reality in this one, right? You guys up for it? Yeah, you, you've seen it, huh? Who's done the virtual reality? You guys all have, huh? If you guys haven't done the virtual, oh my gosh, you guys are going to be so excited. <laughs> Jake wanted a key to the VR room. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll, we'll put some of these in virtual reality. That would be really fun. Maybe towards the end of the semester, but we'll get there. Um, and what, that's what's really great about Revit too, right? You're creating this 3D model, and it can be used in SketchUp. It can be used in virtual reality. I mean, you can use it for 2D construction drawings. It's just really, really easy to use with a lot of different things, right? Okay, so um, let's talk about some terminology. I'm going to pop into 3D, Oops. okay, and I'm going to look at my file here. And I just want you to know we have um, items in Revit that are called hosts, okay, and we have elements that are called hosted elements or components, okay. Um, we have views, datum, and annotation. So we have host. Component, views, datum, and annotation, all right? And um, the idea behind a host, a host is something like a wall, right? And a wall is a host because it can accept elements that are hosted, things like windows or doors, okay? And the basic difference between the two items is that um, a wall can exist by itself, but a hosted element like a door, you can't just put doors in space, okay? So if I go to door and I want to create a door, you see how if I click, 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 I can't place it in space, right? It needs to be hosted onto an element. Click. Do you see how easy that door was to make, right? Careful, Jake. That's okay. It's okay. Designers, right? Is it inside? It's technically safe. <laughs> It's survival of the fittest in my house. Right. If you want to walk out, <laughs> yeah, the Darwin. That's a good. That's a good. <laughs> she just keeps walking out. I don't know. Um, but that is that is a, a a host, right? So things like um, walls and a roof and a floor, right? Those are going to be typical host host elements, okay? And we host items onto those. So. Um, and a lot of things are specifically defined to only host to other things they're made for, right? So doors are meant to host into walls. They're not really meant to host into a roof, right? And windows, windows are a little bit different. They have a little bit more freedom. But in general, most windows are defined to host into walls, right? Not onto the floor. Um, furniture is a lot of times created to host onto the floor and not onto a roof or a ceiling, right? Lights are created to host onto a ceiling and not... Um, you know, I don't know if the, what something else, a roof or whatever, right? Um, but elements that will host, you know, walls, doors, roofs, ceilings, things like that. And then we have hosted items or components like doors, windows, skylights, furniture, things like that. Okay. So doors, windows, hosted elements, roof, wall, floor, hosts. Um, we have views. We've talked about views. Um, we have components. Components are similar to blocks, OK? 
okay? Components, blocks, families, right? Kind of the same thing just for, you know, different programs, right? Um, families and components you'll hear interchangeably used in Revit, right? So um, a door will be called a component, but a door is also a family, okay? Um, which are similar to blocks, right? They're, they're a, um, a collection of 3D geometry that form, you know, an object, right? So this door, for example, let me open its family, which is a separate file. And this family, right, it's generated from a, you know, a 3D, kind of a, not a cube, like a 3D rectangle, right? And then I have the trim, which is kind of an odd wedge-shaped piece that's been, you know, extruded all the way around the door's trim. Sometimes you'll have doorknobs or windows or view lights, whatever, right? Um, but a family is just a collection of 3D objects that is defined as something, right? Like a door, or window, or a piece of furniture, okay? I'm going to close out of this and get back in here. Um, doors, windows, furniture, all components, all families. We have datums. This is likely my favorite thing in Revit. Honest, well, maybe not. It's hard to choose. Um, but the datums, right? <laughs> I think one of the hardest things in AutoCAD is to keep track of vertical datum. Um, and it's because you just, because the files are all separate, it's hard to keep track of them from one file to the next, right? Um, but with Revit, it being one file, all of the datums are placed in here. And when you create a level, it automatically keeps track of the verticality of it, right? So I look here and I know that my roof line is 18 foot, or sorry, 19 foot 8 inches, right, above level 1, which is 0. And I know that if I move it, let me move it, hopefully this doesn't mess everything up. It's going to error, right? Even though that there's an error, it kept track of that movement, right? So it went from, what was it, 19 or 18 foot, whatever. I moved it up 3 or 4 feet to 23 feet, okay? If I take this foundation and I move it down, two feet, right? It keeps track of that movement. And not only does it keep track of that movement here in my elevation, right? Um, but because these items have a parametric relationship in the model, if I go to something like a building section, I have those exact same numbers, right? And this is the problem in AutoCAD, right? Um, I, I draw the section, which is a very easy place to kind of set the markers, the, the data markers, but then I forget to put them in the elevation right? And so the elevation has the wrong data markers and nobody ever notices, right? So there's a problem when it goes to be built. Somebody's like, well, hey, which one is correct? Is it the one in the section or the one in the elevation? And you're like, I don't know. I don't remember, right? Let's call the civil engineer and let's get, let's get the right datum, right? <laughs> um, so it becomes just kind of a, a nightmare to track things down. Where in Revit, it's, it just keeps track of things and it's from view to view to view, which makes it very easy. Um, and then we have annotation, right? So hosts, Components, views, datum, and annotation. Annotation is going to be things like um, grids. Grids, which, again, keep track of themselves. If you move one, it moves them all in every view. Floor plan, elevation, section. Okay? Um, we have dimensions. We have text. We have a lot of things like that. Um, and that is considered annotation. Okay? All right. One final thing. Okay? I promise we'll be done. <laughs> um, saving a Revit file in the file type that we have when we're done. Okay. Um, in this class, we're not going to get too complicated um, with the idea of a central file. Um, but let me just talk about, you know, this is really great. But if this were AutoCAD and I were working in the floor plan and somebody else wanted to work on the floor plan and they went to open it, it would say, hey, Shelly has that file open. It's locked for editing. Right? And I couldn't go into this. Two people can't be in the same file to work, right? which is good and bad. Now, the way that Revit works, you're like, well, hey, wait, it's one file. How does everybody kind of work in one file? right? And the way that this system somewhat works is that we still have our one model file, but little computers out here, little worker bees, right? out here working, what they do essentially is they connect to the central model and the central model allows them to save a local file onto their computer, okay? So this person connects to the central model 
and the central model shoots out a local file to their computer. So everybody is working on a file on their individual computer, okay? That is then sent back a local, right? When I'm working here, I make changes on my local file, and the way that it works is it's called a sync. You sync back, you work on your local file, you save, and then it syncs the information back into the, to the, the central file, and it updates every single person that's connected to it, okay? So you can connect, everybody can be working on the same model, but at the same time, you're working locally on your own computer, so it's not locked out like a read-only file. So you say you can kind of get this, but if you take something wrong, you can't get it back. Well, you can, because you can undo it on your local file, and when you sync back, it makes the change. Okay. Yeah. So you're working on your computer, you're syncing back to the, the, the Revit model, right? Now, it used to be a little bit different, but now it's almost kind of like, first come, first serve, right? Where <coughs> instead of being locked out of the floor plan, sometimes, like if I had touched the couch, right, there's a couch and a chair right there, right? And I move it over here, and so it's sitting right here instead. And then this person says, hey, I wanna move that couch. But, you know, Shelly, you touched it last, and she hasn't synced back to the central file for a while. <coughs> but this person will get an error that says, Shelly has control of that, that couch. Will you, you know, if when she syncs back, I'll release it and then you can change it, right? So there's still a little bit of back and forth between people, um, but having worked in Revit for a really long time and worked in, worked in small offices, big offices, it's very rarely a problem, right? If I have something locked out, I'll say, hey, you know, can you, can you sync your file? You've locked me out of the furniture. And they'll say, yeah, sure. So they sync back and then you have access to the files again. Um, so that's how, we're not gonna get a whole lot into that because it's kind of like another whole learning curve. Um, but that is generally how the system functions, okay? So with that said, um, when I save a file, I'm being very simplistic about it, but it can get quite complicated when you work in an office, right? Which we're not gonna get into a whole lot. But when I do save my own file and it's just me working, right? I'm working in an individual file. I don't have to share with anybody else. When I hit save, okay, I'm gonna go to my desktop. I'm gonna create a new folder called Revit 2018. I am just gonna save my individual file just like I would any AutoCAD file, right? I'm gonna give it a name sample project. I'm going to make sure this says RVT, Revit. That's a Revit file, okay? The file extension for Revit, Revit projects dot RVT is a Revit, it's a working file, working file, right? And a dot RFA, okay, is a family. I'm trying to remember the, uh, file I'm blanking. It's um, <coughs> RTE. <coughs> RTE is the template file. Okay, so those are the three <coughs> file types that you'll have with Revit. Okay, RVT, RFA, and RTE. Now, um, you can see those file types here. Well, we have Revit template file. We'll talk about families later. But if you wanted to save a template, you would do it here. But for now, we're just going to keep it as a Revit file. Okay, we don't create what's called a, a BAK file like AutoCAD does, but it does, Revit does generate backup files, okay? Now, kind of the crazy, let's see if they've changed it, yep. Kind of the crazy thing about Revit is they want you to have 10 backup files, right? Um, so let me show you what this does if I leave that at 10. I hit save. Okay, let's just pull my screen down a little bit here. Okay, and I'm going to open up, let's see, Revit Project. Here we are. Oh, nope, that's not the right file. <laughs> there it is. Okay, when I'm in here and I make a change, delete, control S, you see a Revit backup generated, control S, control S.
it keeps 10 copies of your backup file if you are not careful, right? And it just keeps saving over. So I've saved, I don't know, 30 times, right? Um, so you potentially could have 10 backups, which is, you know, I mean, I guess it's good safety. Um, but that's quite a bit of files, right? So um, what you want to do is set your backup to maybe keep two or three, right? I think two or three is a good safe number. And we can designate Revit files from Revit backups by the number, right? Um, this, this system is good and it's bad. I don't really like that they look exactly the same as the icon, right? The icons look the same. They have the same name, although they do have a number. Um, they do have the same extension, right? And you think, well, that's not really a big deal, right? But me, very literally, like several months ago, I accidentally double-clicked on one of these, and it killed days of work in one of the files I've been working in because I had opened a backup file, and it was several days old, and I didn't realize it at first because I opened it on, like, a cover page. I was like, oh, there it is, you know? You start doing something, you notice a misspelling on the cover page, and oh, yeah, and you hurry and change it and hit save, and... Then you notice, wait a minute, well, this is gone and that's gone, right? Um, so I have, I've done this recently. Um, so it's good to have the backups, right? But it's bad in that it's very easy to kind of override your work with a backup file if you're not careful, okay? Um, and as far as I know, there is not a way to like take, let's, to take this and make a new folder up there and call it something like, backup, right? And to route your backup files into that folder, so at least they're in a separate folder. Um, I guess you could maybe take these and copy them in, but there's no way to route that system into that folder, right? Yeah, but when you make, when you open like the backup file, when you make some changes, it will change like within the regular one? Um, it will do something? Or? Yes, because it saves it as a working file. Yeah. So it saved over the top of my other one. And then when I hit save a couple times, it immediately killed all the other backup files that I had. You know, it was bad. Yeah, but you, I mean, when you're doing that, you don't realize that. Yeah. If you came into it from Revit, though, and opened it from there, it always opened the right one. No, 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 no. <laughs> so if I were to go, go to file, open, right? If it were in your recent and it was the right file, then yes, right. yes. But I don't. I honestly, after that experience I had, I don't trust the recent file yeah. because every now and again, I, 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 I'm pretty careful about file management and structure because I know this happens, right? Every now and again, if I'm not paying attention, I've opened a backup, but, but I've realized it and I thought, oh, I need to close that out, right? But once you close it out, every now and again, it gets it gets in the recent files, right? So you have to just be very sure it's not one of those, right? Because they just all look the same. What if, what if, you, if you have changed like the original one to a different name, you can keep that one if you're going to need like the backup work on that one? Well, you could do that. So you're saying keep one here and keep one here, I mean right? like the simple project, like the, this is the last one, the original one. This, if you change right? this one to a different name and be want to make changes on that backup. Oh, you could do, one. yeah, you could do that. The only problem is that when it's you, one person working, and it's on your own files, that's okay. But when it's you and a team, right, and you're working on a central file, which is what this system is called, and other people are connecting to it, you shouldn't really have multiple copies of the same model, even if it has a different name, because it gets confused. Yeah. yeah. It's, that's, this is the finickiness of Revit right here, is the file structure and how people connect to it. It's very finicky, right? Um, it's on, like it's really just very fragile, honestly. Um, so, but you, so you just have to, be, and I say it, and it's easy to do, I've done it, you just have to be really diligent about paying attention, right? Um, okay, so here's all of our backup files. If I don't want 10 backup files generating, right? Oh, it won't let me delete them all. Oh, well, that's a good sa fail safe, right? You can only delete one at a time. <laughs> okay, let's let's do this. Oh yeah, I do. Okay, so if I wanted to save this file, save as, and let's just pretend this was the first time I saved it, 
and it was on my desktop, okay? Um, I could call this new project, okay? RVT file, options, I click on options right here and I can save that to, to change it to three, right? So I change it to three, I hit okay, save, and now since I've only changed it to three backups, whenever I hit save, it will just keep three backup files active, okay? <laughs> I would keep a couple. I think two is minimum. Three is maybe a bit excessive, but I think just the how how much damage you can do in a short amount of time in this project in this right. You hit save two times and your backups are killed, right? Yeah. So I think it's good to keep a few. Yeah. Okay. Final thing with Revit. This is a thing that I don't like either. Is that once you have saved your Revit file in a certain version of Revit, you cannot go back, okay? So if I have Revit 2018 and I open something and I hit save, it is in 2018 forever. You cannot go to any previous version. There's no way to convert it. There's no way to set it back. Once it's saved, it's permanent, okay? Um, so you go to a professional office and they'll have, auto or they'll have Revit 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18 all installed in their computers um, because once you start it in a version, you have to keep it there because all of your consultants may not have the newer version of Revit, right? They're working on, Revit is making it so that most people are on um, like a network or a, what is it called, a subscription so that everybody has the newest version, right? Um, but, you know, um, it's just a problem. You, you have to keep it in the version that you started in essentially unless your whole team is willing to upgrade, right? Um, but you cannot go backwards once you've saved it. So just know that that, that happens, right? Um, and it's a, pro it's a problem. <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay. Any questions? I was like, no. It's time to go home, right? <laughs> okay. Um, well, enjoy your long weekend. There's no homework in Revit. Um, next time we meet, other than the getting ready assignment, right, that you guys had, to post a photo. Yeah. <laughs> Let's look real quick. Hello. <laughs> oh yeah, I know who you are. Let's see. I just want to look at our schedule real quick. Okay, so we in, we introduced it today. Um, when we get back, which will be on Wednesday the 17th, we'll start with basic drawing tools. And really, you won't have any homework there either. <laughs> so your first homework is going to occur when we start um, with, uh, with, probably with, here, this week. It'll be that week. So like I said, it's going to be a couple of class periods before you have homework. Um, but yeah, we I will see you next week, next Wednesday, I guess. Let me just stop this video. Let's see.